In April of 2021, Arkansas became the first state in the U.S. to ban all gender-confirming care for transgender people under the age of 18. After several families and doctors sued the state of Arkansas over the ban, U.S. District Judge James Moody blocked the law. This allowed families to continue medical treatment for their children. Transgender families lost access to health care again this February after Arkansas Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders signed into law another transgender health care ban. The bill named the Save Adolescents from Experimentation Act was proposed and passed by a Republican majority in both the Arkansas House and Senate and will go into effect this summer. Following the passage of the Gender Confirming Treatment Ban, Sanders also approved another bill, HB 1156, which prohibits transgender students from using the bathroom of the gender they identify with. Allowing transgender students to use the restroom they identify with is considered gender-affirming treatment and recommended by the American Academy of Pediatrics and the American Psychiatric Association, two nonpartisan professional associations comprised of licensed medical doctors. In October of 2022, prior to the passage of the bill restricting bathroom access to transgender students in K-12 schools, the Conway Public Schools Board approved a policy restricting bathroom access to transgender students in the Conway Public Schools District. Dr. David Naylor Jr., a local Conway physician, voted yes to restricting bathroom access to transgender students on the Conway Public Schools Board in direct opposition to medical advice from the American Psychiatric Association and American Academy of Pediatrics. News 6 reached out to Dr. David Naylor Jr. about why he voted against gender-affirming treatment recommended by the American Academy of Pediatrics, and he declined to be interviewed. We then spoke with a transgender UCA student who began gender-confirming treatment as an adolescent in Arkansas. I've been going to um, Park West Pharmacy uh, for over a year now to receive my hormone replacement therapy which I've had since I was 16 um, from the UAMS uh, Women's Health Clinic. We asked her about how gender-confirming treatment affected her as a minor. Um, before I started gender-affirming treatment, I was really scared and lost, and I didn't know what to think about myself. I had a lot of suicidal uh, ideation. But after I started my gender-affirming care, uh, HRT in specific, I began to see the... Um, importance of living to your true self and seeing who you are. We also asked about her thoughts on how the gender affirming treatment ban will affect transgender minors. It's only going to increase alienation uh, between themselves and their identities, their families. It's going to cause a whole list of problems, and I guarantee you'll be able to see trans minors leaving the state just so they can go access treatment somewhere else with their families. Risa Ramsahai, an Arkansas licensed psychological examiner who works at the UCA Counseling Center, says she thinks parents of transgender youth should determine whether or not gender-affirming treatment is appropriate for their children and not the government. I have no idea why the government decided that parents cannot parent their own children. And so um, to take that out of the hands of parents is ridiculous, harmful. As a person with a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering and a master's degree in mental health counseling, she says the ban on gender affirming care is harmful. It's ridiculous for I think for government to try to tell, generally tell parents how to handle their children when children are all different, I think it's very harmful. Reporting for UCA Channel 6 News, this is Colburn Clark. We can show everyone who we are and the love we represent. Show people that to be inclusive is to save lives. I urge each and every one of us to show others what it is like to be kind and accepting 
to lift up our siblings all over and help them stand tall. 